when civilians can be interned under IHL. You will remember that POWs can be interned without any specific reasons or procedure because of the increasing risk that they represent for the adversary. In principle, civilians are not involved in the hostilities and shall not be detained. That said, there may be exceptional circumstances where civilians constitute imminent threats to the security of belligerents. In such circumstances, a belligerent is entitled to take safety measures, the most severe of which is interning them or placing them in assigned residence. While authorizing such safety measures, Geneva Convention 4 considers that restricting the freedom of actions of individuals without criminal charges for preventive security reasons is extreme, even in international armed conflict. Such measures are thus strictly constrained by substantive and procedural requirements. These safeguards are particularly important today in the context of armed conflict engaged by states to fight so-called terrorists and their growing tendency to intern them solely to gather information about their activities. With regard to substantive requirements, let's emphasize that internment or assigned residence of civilians can only be carried out when rendered necessary by consideration of security. Indeed, such measures can take place, according to Article 42 of Geneva Convention 4, only if the security of the detaining power makes it absolutely necessary for aliens in the territory of a party to the conflict. And, according to Article 78 of Geneva Convention 4, when imperative reasons for security justify these measures in occupied territory. However, Geneva Convention 4 does not provide further indications on the meaning and scope of this ground of detention. As the PICTE commentary stated, it did not seem possible to define the expression security of the state in a more concrete fashion. It is thus left very largely to governments to decide the, the measures of activity prejudicial to the internal or external security of the state which justifies internment or assigned residence. That being said, the ICTY has provided parameters to this discretion, stating that persons by their activities, knowledge or qualifications must represent a real threat to the state's present or future security. It goes without saying that an individual cannot be interned solely for the purposes of intelligence gathering for the mere fact that he is a national of or aligned with an enemy party for punishment or to circumvent criminal processes. The ICTY also made it clear that measures of internment must remain exceptional and cannot be taken on a collective basis. As to the procedural requirement, Article 43 of Geneva Convention 4 provides that any protected persons interned or placed in assigned residence shall be entitled to have such action reconsidered as soon as possible by an appropriate court or an administrative board, and if the decision is maintained, to have it reviewed periodically at least twice yearly. It flows from this provision that the review body must not necessarily be judicial in nature as long as its impartiality and objectivity are ensured at all times through the respect of minimal procedural guarantees such as informing promptly the persons in turn of the reasons why internment measures are taken.